All right, everybody, welcome to the Thursday Roundtable. I'm very excited today to have Chloe in the spotlight. Chloe is our social media manager at Bedstar, and uh, she's got a, a really unique perspective um, in a lot of ways because she's young, of course, and incredibly smart. She's also very marketing savvy. She's in a marketing role here and has a marketing background. So I think the combination of her perspective representing her generation along with her uh, marketing um, sensibilities will really give us all um, a lot of insight into how we need to be thinking differently about reaching the younger generations um, in all the ways. So I'm gonna turn it over to Chloe. I'm excited to hear what she has to share. Um, and then we'll go to questions. So take it away, Chloe. Awesome. Well, hi, um, I'm Chloe Halverson. As Betsy said, I work for Red Star as a social media account manager. Um, I'm really excited to be talking just because I guess I am a youngish person. That still feels kind of weird because I think sometimes I feel really young and then other times I'm like, wow, I'm really old, which not to make any of you feel old. But um, I guess in preparation for like talking today um, and thinking about social media and being a young person and just talking to young people, um, I kind of started to think about why I got into marketing in the first place and why I'm drawn to social media. And I think it's because um, I've really always been a listener. That's just kind of been my, my role. And not that I don't talk or speak up or share my ideas, but I'm really just I'm a listener. Like my grandma used to tell me and my sister's stories when we were little about my dad or my aunts and uh, uncles. And um, I would spend a lot of my free time when I was younger at the library. I was on like a, I would help organize events for kids in Wilmer at the public library. Um, and then I guess in high school, I was the friend that people came to if they needed to talk about something, like they just needed someone to listen. And then in college, I was an RA. So I was helping all kinds of people sort through their roommate conflict and all kinds of problems and I guess listening has just been something that's kind of followed me through all of those things um and now I listen to stories and help tell stories as a social media account manager so I guess I just really love hearing those stories um and I think when you simplify it there's a quote by I think it's Seth Godin that marketing is really about the stories you tell or marketing is storytelling um, and I think that just is probably why I got into it. And then when you dive deeper, you get into the strategy and analytics, which I also really enjoy. Um, but before I start talking about like all of those strategies and like getting into it, um, I guess some of my background and my experience that's like led me to where I am now is I was also in an entrepreneurship program in high school called Can Do High CEO. And I think maybe some of you know what it is. It looks like well, Kristen knows what it is and Betsy knows what it is, but um, hopefully some of you have heard about it too, but it's basically um, a class for juniors and seniors in high school that um, you can participate in and you start your own business through the class. So every single day you go to a different business and you get to ask questions and learn about their business um, and I guess just hear all about it and you take everything that you've learned and you start a business and through that, I started my own marketing business um, and I didn't continue, continue with my business, but it led me to some amazing opportunities. Like I was able to do a lot of social media work for Candy High County um, through Vision 2040. So that, I guess that was really marketing to younger people. It's like showing everyone what's going on in the Wilmer Lakes area. So what events are happening, what businesses are there. Um, I did a lot of like videos to promote Rock and Robins in the summer or like the Little Crow Ski Show, like showing that that was happening. It was really just an account um, dedicated to telling people what's going on in our area. So it's really like that, that audience was younger people because people, I guess the people on the chamber wanted um, me to help involve young people in what's going on in our area. So I did a lot of that. Um, and then I also did an internship with Betsy at um, Workup and Red Star. And I did a little bit with Startup. So I got to do social media there, listen to some more stories, listen to some cool entrepreneurs. Um, and 
really learn more about entrepreneurship and kind of like some different I don't know just businesses are so different all over and when you think about that it's like when every business is so different how do you market to younger people but um I don't know I think all through all of those experiences I really just learned I loved listening and that I like asking questions and figuring out more um but I also learned that I think a lot of time people underestimate the role of the the youth in their community, which is kind of sad, but I think it also just pushes me to, I don't know, challenge people to ask their youth more questions or to involve them because they have so many ideas and so much knowledge to contribute. And I think it's easy for us to like hear something like when I was in the CEO class, um, there were some students who didn't know how to address an envelope and they didn't know how to send a letter. And for some people that might feel like, oh my gosh, that's, that's so dumb. Like, why, why don't you know how to do that? But if you think about it, they don't, we don't do letters in school anymore. Like we don't, we don't send letters. We use social media. Like it's just not something we do. So it can be really easy to say like, to shame youth for not knowing what they're doing or like, oh, this generation is coming up and they don't know what we're doing, but we're the ones that are teaching them. So I think uh, it's on us sometimes to like take that extra effort to like ask what, ask what they're doing, what they want to be doing, like tell them what we've done. Because if you're not passing those things along or asking questions like how is anyone ever going to know you know like that's the whole thing of storytelling is like you're passing down through generations so I just think it's so important to do that um and it's like how many times do we sit in a I was I was talking to Betsy and Gina about this a little bit but how many times do we sit in a room and we're trying to decide something that's going to affect the youth in our communities and we have adults who have brought like their young teenagers or kids and we don't ask them their perspective or what they're thinking. So I just, I think it can be easy to let the adults decide. And sometimes the adults do need to make the ultimate decision, but the decisions we're making, whether it's on a small or a big scale are definitely affecting our young people. So yeah, I think just through all of those experiences, it really taught me to like give myself permission to ask questions and speak up and be curious, even though like my role is to listen. So yeah, I would just encourage you to ask the young people in your community to share their perspective and um, they might offer up something that you had never considered before. And then you're just like, wow, like I had never thought of that, which makes sense because young people are growing up in this age of social media where they're literally from the age of two they're watching stuff something on an ipad or learning how to do something so it's just such a different perspective that can be brought um yeah so i guess i want to pause there and just see if anyone has any questions about like i guess my experience through those things before i go into some strategies and things that I would do to involve young people, I guess, through marketing. Yeah, I have a question, Chloe. Um, yeah. You mentioned shaming uh, youth around not being able to do certain things. And that really struck me because I think it's on point and we don't like to admit it, us older generation, but it's, it's, it is shaming. Um, what are some other things that we tend to do that around with young people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think really a lot of the time is it's just like just asking, asking them their perspective, because a lot of times, like I remember as a kid, it wasn't intentional, but you're just with, with a group of adults and they're talking about something. And maybe this was just me, but like, I was always thinking like, oh, what about this? Or like, oh, this is, this would be interesting, but nobody really asks you when you're a kid what you think about something so it can be easy to just kind of sit there and and listen and that's again that maybe is a personality thing because I'm a little more introverted but I think when we ask just ask questions and like ask young kids their perspective um I think another thing that's easy to do is when we do ask kids something or when young people do ask a question like sometimes you look at them like, oh, that was a dumb question. So, if, so I think just 
there's that saying when you're in high school, or at least they said it a lot when I was in high school, like no question is a dumb question, which I think is fair because everyone comes from a different background, like a different skill set, like everyone knows different things. So Chloe, I, I have a, um, you're giving me a thought around this fine line. I think we're walking in mm -hmm. this, even in this conversation and this topic and that I think we do shame our younger generation because they're on social media all the time. Yeah. We say it as if it's the worst possible thing or it's ruining them or it's something, um, it's lazy, whatever. But on the flip side, we're trying to strategically use social media and we all recognize that that is the most powerful way to reach people. So we're kind of talking out of both sides of our mouth. What's your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think I would agree. We are, we are in a day and age where marketing is so social media heavy. And even in our personal lives, people use social media all the time. And that's not to say that we should be on social media all the time because like there is a lot of like mental health issues surrounding social media and kids growing up with social media and the like self-image issues and like constantly comparing yourself to like this ideal like perfect person you're seeing on the internet like it can be really really damaging to be on social media all the time but again like social media is so central to I don't know our social lives now like I the way I connect with my grandma or my relatives in Wyoming is I go on Facebook like that's how I connect with them we don't really I guess I call my grandma often and I see her but like social media is just used as a way to connect with people. Um, so I think it can be a really amazing tool and we shouldn't really shame people for being on it. It's when it becomes like, like an unhealthy environment is when it's like, okay, maybe it's time to take a step back. Cause I yeah. think young people growing up, like because social media is so much a part of their lives, it's almost like they can't like sometimes it's harder to step away. Whereas like me now, I grew up with social media, but it was also part of my job. So I can still take a step away and be like, okay, it's take, no, time to take a little bit of a break. Okay. All right. Well, very good thoughts around that. Um, go ahead. You sounds like you have some strategy ideas for us. Can I ask a question before she yeah. moves on? Yeah. Um, I also, one of the things as you're talking about shame and storytelling, I'm also thinking of uh, like dismissing, like as an adult, we dismiss the yeah. importance and perspective of young people. And as I, as you're talking, I'm thinking about a couple of things, like I'm thinking of as I know the generation or at least the age that you're at. Um, I'm, I'm curious, when did you start um, interacting with technology? Um, and then also, when is that time in your age, in your age level, or maybe where you were in life, when you could feel that you were not being dismissed anymore? Because I think that that dismissing happens. We do as an adult, I do it. I know that now. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna do the best I can to stop doing that. But um, it's one of those uh, where we have to mine our biases like all the time and unearth them, pull them out by the root. And that's a lot of work. And I just feel like this is, you are bringing up such an important topic because no matter where we are, we need to value young people and their perspectives because they're humans just like us. They have perspectives and um, experiences that will inform us. So how can, how can we do better by that? But I also want to know, like, personally, your interaction with technology, like, when did that start? Were you two? <laughs> <laughs> I was not two. I mean, I, I guess I was watching movies from when I was really little. That's another thing. I love watching movies. It's one of my, it's like a hobby. I just went to the new Marvel movie last night with my sister. It wasn't very good, but we went anyway, because we're big <laughs> Marvel fans. Um, but it's storytelling. So, 
yeah. it is storytelling and I think that's why I enjoy it so much but um I think I first got a cell phone when I was in fifth grade I think and it was because there was like a half hour to an hour period after school where I would be at home by myself before my mom got home and we didn't have a home phone so I needed to make sure I had a cell phone so I could text her when I got home and make sure everything was okay um so that's when I first got a cell phone but I think I got Facebook in probably or like started using YouTube in I think seventh grade so that's like like middle school onward, social media was like something I would do. Like it was a part of my, sorry, my chair is squeaking because it's like dry or humid in here. I don't know. But um, so yeah, like seventh, seventh grade was when I got on social media. And I think now kids get on social media a lot younger, which is just kind of crazy. Um, yeah was didn't you have a second part to your question or yeah no? the dismissing part the yeah dismissing. I think sometimes honestly maybe it's just because depending on what I'm wearing or how I'm dressed I feel like people still think I'm I'm younger and so like I don't know just people will will look at you like oh like you're you're a little young to be here or like I don't know how to explain it, but there are still times where I feel like people see me as a young person. And so when I contribute something, they're like, oh, like they're, it's more surprised, like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Like this young person is telling me something. But I think the last time I actually remember being dismissed and told like, oh, you're too young to understand was, I think I was honestly, probably a sophomore in college. And it was a meeting with, um, I think it was like school, school officials or like administrative people. And I was trying to like contribute something and like, oh no, like this is for, this is for the counselors or the adults or whatever else to decide. And I was like, oh, well, that's fine, but you should think about this. And then I went on my merry way, but Good for you. yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I, I don't know, even being in college, I think uh, like young people are dismissed a lot more because they're still seen as like, oh, you're still learning, but we learn all our lives. So I don't know how mm -hmm. much. Yeah. I'll just take that has in it. Well, but. if I ever do that to you, you call me on it. You yeah, say, say, well, Kristen. actually, I think, listen, yeah. Because here's the other thing that happens when you're a mom and you, your mom and I are friends. And so then I see you as kid. And so then I carry kid around with me and it's not your fault. It's me, you know, and my like, you know, little grid system. But I have ever since you started this, like you're on here, you're a face among all the other faces. I'm like, whoa, she is so amazing. And I'm, I do not see you as kid anymore. And, you know, that's the, that's the other thing. I just, I'm, I have to mind that bias, unearth it, and then clear it from, you know, it's so, it's hard work. We all have to do it. And I just think you're re really shining a light on something that we just don't, we take for granted. So I think it's really important. Yeah. And I think it's also interesting, like coming from smaller towns where people know like people know my mom people know my dad and like when when is that period where you stop getting looked at as like oh like Rhonda or Fred's kid and oh it's Chloe the adult professional who works for Red Star so that's something also that's like a very a very interesting shift working for um or just like working in a small town or being from a small town it's like I, I'm sure a lot of people my age deal with that as well as like it's not a bad thing. Like, I love that people recognize me. They're like, oh, like you're, you're Rhonda's daughter. Oh my gosh, you look so much like her. Or like, oh, like your friends. Like, I, I love that because I love my parents, but um, there is definitely a shift that happens somewhere in the past or next couple of years where people see me as like, not someone's kid and an actual working adult. So right. it's just kind of interesting dynamic, like layer there as well. 
Well, you're definitely All making right. that move. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> An adult now. So you yeah. still have approval. Yeah. <laughs> All right, adult Chloe. Give us adult some adult Chloe. advice on how to market to the younger generation. Awesome. So I don't know, this probably won't come as a surprise since I talked about how I'm a listener for so long before this, but I think one of the first steps, like when you're marketing to young people is to listen, like tune in and hear like, what are they interested? What are they doing on social media? Like, I think it's so important to get an understanding of who your audience is or what they want before you start marketing to them. Like, um, I know when we're strategizing or planning on the social media end, like we think about like, what's our goal for this post or like, what's our goal for this campaign? So thinking about what you want to do when you're reaching a, an audience of younger people is really important. Is it just, you want to connect with them, like raise awareness, or is it, you want to grow a following, um, or like you want them to take an action, like you want them to actually like click and go to your website or click and order a sweatshirt or um, if you're hiring, like you want them to click on an application. So I think knowing who your audience is and what the goal is when you're reaching them is really important first. Um, and then I would say identify young people who are really passionate either about what you're doing um, or you already know that they're big supporters of your brand. Like if you notice the same, same kids coming into your coffee shop every single day after school and they're like bringing different friends and they're really excited to be there, like go up to them and ask them like, Hey, like I've noticed you coming in here. Like, thank you so much for coming back. Like, uh, how's your experience been? Or like, what do you like about this place? And I know with younger kids, sometimes they're going to be taken aback because usually no, adults don't ask them their opinion so don't be surprised if like at first they're not not sure how to share but I think for the most part kids will be really willing to share what they think and like give their give their perspective um but yeah just getting their input and then I think another step is like you could have brand ambassadors which there's different ways to do that um and it doesn't have to be like a paid partnership where this person is on social media promoting your brand all the time, but just like identifying people who are going to like talk about you in the community or like when I think there's this saying, um, I'm forgetting how it goes right now, but it's something about keep people close that say your name in a room full of opportunities, I think is what it is. Um, and it's really like about identifying those people who are gonna like support you and like want to share like, Hey, this is what this person is doing. Um, and I think you can kind of have that approach when you're looking for young people to be ambassadors for your brand or like, yeah. So I think identifying those people that are just passionate either about what you're doing or like your business are just, that's just really important. Um, I would also say researching different trends, which doesn't have to be like, I don't want to like scare you, like formal research. It doesn't have to be super formal. It's really like going on to Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook and just looking for either like com competitors or similar brands and seeing what they're doing. Like, how are they reaching young people if they have a younger audience? Um, like what hashtags are they using? If you're on TikTok, what sounds are people using? Um, and like, what kind of content is out there? I know one that's pretty, like one type of content that's pretty popular right now is Polaroid film or Polaroid photos. Um, a lot of people are using like old Polaroid cameras, taking a bunch of pictures and then they'll get it developed and then share those photos on social media. So if you're trying to reach younger people, that might be like a cool strategy to like get a Polaroid camera and leave it out for people to take pictures or just take pictures of your like coworkers or your staff or whatever else in action and then sharing those um I think that would kind of be fun to do I I want to do that for something as well because I think it would be pretty cool um and then I think I said this earlier but a little a little different so ask questions but I think utilize the polls and question boxes on like Instagram Facebook or the comments because I think 
when you have an audience um, already and you want to get their perspective and keep them engaged like asking them for their input and feedback is a really good way to to do that because it makes them feel valued like you want to know what what they're interested in like what they want to see if you um like say for example you're you're a metal shop and you want to do like a cool project on the side and you say oh like what kind of project do you want to see like if people comment and tell you like that's a a good way to get ideas but also like makes people feel valued or if you're asking a question about um say in a restaurant like what specials would you like to see this week or what flavors would you like us to try or um yeah just different things like that I think the question in the polls box could be could be really interesting um and then I think also in general when you find common ground with someone to connect on something that's really just like an easy way to start, start building a connection, building an audience. Um, trying to think if you're on Instagram specifically, I would say that's such a visual, a visual platform. So creating a brand or like creating visuals on your page that are just really engaging and pull people in. Um, like for me, that's, I really like following design accounts online. Um, so whether that's like graphic design or marketing or it's card companies or it's like renovations, I like following like really bright, colorful things. Um, I'm wearing black and white right now, so it's not very colorful, but like I follow accounts that literally their page, I can just see all of this like blue and green and purple and whatever else. Um, and so for me, that's like visually appealing to me, but also seeing like just a cohesive like collection of photos that are visually appealing. Um, Holly, can you um, give us a sense of what is a typical person your age using social media for? And what's the combination of social media platforms they use and how do they use them? Yeah, I would say probably the two main platforms that young people are using right now. So this is like, when I say young people, I'm talking people probably middle school to like college. And that's a very wide range and it's definitely gonna vary a lot cause that is a wide range. But I would say that Instagram and TikTok are probably the two most common across that group. Um, and then there's something called Visco that's pretty popular as well, but that's a place to just post photos. So I wouldn't say that that's necessarily, a, it could be a place to market. I haven't really thought about it. So maybe I will think about it now, but it's more just a photo posting app. So Instagram and TikTok, um, are kind of where, where young people are. And I know Instagram has reels now too. So sometimes in place of TikTok, like reels are used. Um, so how often during the day are young people looking at their social channel? What's oh the, gosh, what's the I use? I can't imagine. I look at my usage sometimes and it's just like in the evenings and it's like at least a few hours of just being, being online and I'm not sure what what the rules are for school and stuff now if you can have your phones in school only at lunch or whatever else um but I'm sure it's like probably an average of like five to seven hours that kids are on on apps and I'm just I'm throwing that number out there I feel like that's probably what it is um but they're definitely like we're just the generations coming up it's just it, constantly consuming information, whether that's like seeing stuff outside, like seeing TV, like social media, everything else. And I think that's why, um, I don't know, there's this big thing going around about instant gratification, like people want things now. And I think for younger generations, that's such a, such a big thing because we came up in social media and it's like, we're constantly consuming information. Um, so yeah, I think they're on, on social media a lot. One thing I've noticed with my kids and their friends is they're very much more aware of, they have a worldview around politics, around environmental issues and all the stuff that I don't think I was even aware of at their age. Um, tell us about that, like the level of awareness of what's happening in the world that our younger generation has that I think is also very underestimated. 
for sure. I think, I guess the main source of news used to be like, oh, I talked to Al down at the gas station and he gave me the update on the town or you listen to the radio or the newspaper and then like TVs and the news and now social media has become such a large place to share news and share information. So I think a lot of, like if you look at the polls and the turnout of young people in the last like 10 plus, well, 10-ish years, I would say, but probably a little farther back, it's so much higher because social media allows like younger generations to stay involved in what's going on, like politically, like Mm -hmm. environmentally, just like in the world. Um, And I think that's something that was very much a part of, of my experience. Like people use social media as a tool for education as well. And that didn't used to be so much a thing. Like you just go on Facebook or MySpace or whatever it is to like check what people are up to but it kind of evolved into this like way of sharing, sharing news and sharing information. Like I see ads for the news all the time or like different, different issues that are going on. I see a lot of like petitions or just different, Mm -hmm. yeah, just things that are going on. So I think, yeah, social media has definitely become a tool to share, share educational content as well. You know, Chloe, I also, as you're talking, I'm thinking about, um, how intimidating it is for, I can speak for me personally, but yeah, from people my age to kind of get into social media as a platform because of, like you were just saying, you know, the, the quantity of information that is absorbed in any given part of the day and the um, attitude of instant gratification and just that, like Betsy's bringing up it is content rich and issue rich and, um, you know, conflict rich and controversy rich, you know, it's such a dense uh, world. And so it's intimidating from a business owner's point of view, like if I, if I get into this, do I have to sustain it over time? And, you know, so it's, that's all part of the strategy, but um, so it's scary to, to like, try to enter this um, if you know if you have all the normal business intimidate self intimidations anyway but um, so kind of is there a way you can explain how it's worth it to move past that intimidation yeah that's a really good question I guess for me a way of thinking it is like the intimidation aspect is first like going outside of your comfort zone can be scary but there is there's not as much growth in your comfort zone you know sometimes you have to go out of it to grow which can be scary and like I think anyone here who has started a business or done one knows that like you've had to make some scary decisions and do some scary things but for Instagram or social media specifically, I think looking at it like you don't have to reach everyone on the internet. You're just trying to find those people that really want to connect with you and you want to connect with them. So I think the value that comes from social media is creating that community around your business and your brand and really being able to provide like just engaging content or information or just like educational stuff about you and your business to those people who are really going to find value in it. And like, you can listen to and learn from each other. Um, and just like create a fun space for people to like, see what your business is about. Um, so I think social media, there can be a lot of pressure and there can be this constant, like, oh my gosh, I have to post every single day. But I think for me, at least, there's a balance between quantity and quality. I think it's a happy medium where like you're putting out content enough that you're keeping your, your audience engaged, but you're also providing them with information or photos that you find really valuable or you really want to share with them. Yeah. I think I want just a, a little YouTube snippet of just you saying that whole answer. 
And I just want to replay it and replay it and replay it. That is just, you're, you're very wise for such a little kid. We can, we can, they, for, for such a little kid. Um, I think because I was just always such a, such a listener, just like I was, ah. I think people also don't realize how much kids and young adults, like they know what you're saying. Like they can yes. hear you. Like I was, I was more quiet, but I was always around when people were talking about things. And weird, even yeah. my, my grandma or my dad or my mom will talk about how I, when I was a baby, I would just like, I didn't really smile when you first met me, but I would just like, I would just like, I would look at you. Like I would just, I would like look you up and down. I would 